Hello and welcome everyone to my channel Code with Ease by Varsha. So today we are going to solve this lead code medium question which is longest consecutive sequence. So let's take a look at the problem statement. Given an unsorted array of integers nums, we have to return the length of the longest consecutive element sequence. We need to write an algorithm that runs in order of n. So let's see this example. So this is an array which is given to us. It's saying that the longest consecutive element sequence is 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so what is consecutive? Consecutive means the elements like 1, 2, 3, 4. So the element plus 1 is the next element. Then element that element plus 1 is the next element. So that is a consecutive sequence. In the given array, the elements might not be in that same order that we expect it to be. They might not be put in the consecutive order. But we need to find out that sequence of the element which is in the consecutive manner. So in this case, as we can see, we have an element called 1. We also have 3, 2, 4. Everything is scattered across the array. But the consecutive sequence, if we see, after 1, 2 comes, after 2, 3 comes, after 3, 4 comes. That is why the longest consecutive order is 1, 2, 3, 4. If you notice 100, after 100, 101 should be there. Then 102 should be there. But those elements are not present in the array. If we see the next array, this can give us a better example. So we have so many elements. What is the longest consecutive? The length is 9. How? Let's say if we start from 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's it. So we have 9 elements starting from 0 to 8. So all the elements, although they are scattered, although the order is not maintained, but, but the sequence is still consecutive. So that is what we have to find in this question and return the length of that. Okay. So now let's go to the whiteboard to understand the approach for this question. So here is the array that we have. We have to write an algorithm that runs in order of n, but still we'll think of first the brute force way and see if that is going to give us a time complexity of order of n. So as we can see, in this, we have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, but they're scattered. How can we get them in the same order? What is the uh, what is the way to get them in the same order? They are unsorted, like I said in the beginning. The clue over here is to sort it, sort the array. If you are able to sort the array, what do we get? We get 1, 2, 3, 4, 100 and 200. Half of the problem is solved over here. If we can sort the array, any kind of array, even the second example if we see, any kind of array, if we sort it, all the consecutive elements will come together. It can be at the beginning of the array, it can be at the middle of the array, it can be at the end of the array, it doesn't matter. But all the all that matters is all the consecutive elements will now lie next to each other. So that is why sorting the array is important. Once we sort the array, now how can we find out the length? Very simple run of all loop, start from the beginning and just check if the element at i, means the current element, is actually equal to the previous element plus 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. So is 2 equal to 1 plus 1? Is 3 equal to 2 plus 1? Is 4 equal to 3 plus 1? That is all we have to continue checking. The moment it breaks, we can reinitialize the counter. So we can take a counter. So what is, what is the way to solve? Take a counter to track what is the length. Second, keep on checking the current element, previous element, and then keep on adding to the counter uh, the length just to track the length of the sequence. The moment the condition breaks that the current element is not, no longer equal to the previous element plus 1, like in this case, 100 is not equal to 4 plus 1. So in this case, it will break. And then we can have one max to just keep a track of that counter. And then once we reinitialize the counter, we are going to take hold of a new sequence, like 100, 200, whatever the new numbers are going to be. So just to sum it up, what all we need, we need the max variable to track the max length and we need a counter variable which, which we are going to initialize at every start of the sequence and then reinitialize it to 1 when the condition this condition breaks and max we are going to finally return as the answer which is going to be the longest consecutive the length of the longest consecutive sequence that's it this is the brute force way okay with all that being said what is the problem with this the time complexity what is the time complexity for this since we are sorting the array and we know that when we sort the array in Java, we use arrays.sort. The best sorting algorithm will give us a time complexity of n log n. So we need to get rid of this log n component basically to achieve an algorithm of order of n. So that is the goal. So now we have to optimize this. So how can we optimize? Let's try to use some space because we don't have a space constraint. So let's take advantage of that. We'll use space. So we can use some kind of a hashing structure. When, whenever we say we are going to take up space in case of array strings question, the most commonly used approach is to use hashing. We can use either hash map, hash set or whatever. Let's see what can fit the use case. Now, how can we decide whether we want to choose a hash map or we want to choose a hash set? So let's say we have an array like 100, 1, 25, 
and 1. So, this is the array that we have. What is the length of the longest consecutive sequence? We have 1, we have 2, we have 3, we have 1, 2, 3, but we also have duplicate occurrences of 1 and duplicate occurrences of 3. So, in that case, what is going to be the length of the longest consecutive sequence? The length of the consecutive sequence is still 3 because we have 1, 2, 3, the distinct elements we are going to consider. We don't want to consider the duplicate occurrences. So, that is the reason we should be using a hash set. So, if you use a hash set, duplicates will already be taken care of. So, the idea over here is going to be, we will use a hash set, we will do a traversal and we will put all the elements into the hash set. So, in this case, if we take this array, let us put it into hash set. So, we have 100, we will have 1, 25, 3, 40, 2 and 2 we are going to take, but 3 we are not going to take, 3 and 1 we are going to discard. What the set is going to look like after we have inserted all the elements into the set. So, now what is the next thing that we have to do? We know that in a data structure like hash set, the, there is a constant lookup time. Means if we want to get a get a particular element out of it, the time complexity is order of one. So we don't have to traverse the entire set to get a particular element. So that is what we are going to make use of in this problem. So we'll do something like we we'll run another for loop. So the first for loop is going to add to the set, add all elements to the set. That is going to be point number one. Second point is going to be we are going to again add a for loop for the traversal. So, next thing what we are going to check, taking the first element, we will check if current element minus 1 is not contained in the set. What does this mean? So, I am starting from 100. I am going to check if 99 is not contained in the set. If the element is already, if the previous element already exists, then I cannot make this element, the current element as the number 1 element. At, when I say number one element, I mean the starting of the sequence. Basically, what I'm trying to do is I want to get hold of an element which I can call that that it is the starting element of the sequence. So 100 I have to consider because 100 minus 1, 99 is not there. So I'll say okay, 100 is the starting of the sequence. So from 100, I'm going to check onwards if 101, 102, 103 are there or not. So first we'll check this. If it is not contained within this, we are going to run another loop to just to check whether this element current element plus 1 exists in the set or not. So, what we will check? We will check if 101 is there in the set or if 102 is there in this check, uh, set. So, the moment we run this loop and we see that 101 is not there in the set, then we have to exit. The loop will, the condition is going to break. Okay. And at the end, we are going to have one max variable which is going to do the same thing, which is going to track the maximum of either whatever is stored in the max variable or we are going to have another variable which is going to track the length of the sequence. All of that we have to, uh, we can check in the code. I just want to do a simple dry run of how this is going to work. So, 100, 101 since it is not present, we will move to the next element. So, now we are at 1. So, now we will see 1 minus 1 is 0. Is 0 present in the set? It is not present. So, let us say I start my sequence from here. So, next I am going to run this loop and then I am going to check whether 1 plus 1 is present in the set. So, I can see that 1 plus 1 is 2 and 2 is present in the set. So, the loop is going to further continue. Then I will check 2 plus 1 whether that is contained in the set or not. So, then we will see that 3 is also contained. So, we got 1, 2 and 3. So, now 3 is there. Now, 3 plus 1 we are going to check whether 4 is there in the set or not. But we see that 4 is not there. So, now this loop is going to exit. And then finally, when we have to update the max, we are going to check whether the max stored is greater or the current length whatever we have taken hold of is that the greater. So, as in this case, the length is going to be 1, 2, 3, that is 3. So, 3 will be the max updated. So, next we are going to move to the next element that is 25. Same story, 24 is not there. I will assume 25 is the start of the uh, sequence. So, I will check if 26 is there. Since 26 is not there, it will exit and max will still remain as 3 only and the same thing is going to repeat. So, as we can see, in this case, in this set, 1, 2, 3 is the alone, the only consecutive sequence that is available to us. For every other element, the, this loop condition is going to be false. So, that is all about this. The baseline is to use a hash set to keep track of the elements, uh, to rather remove the duplicates from it. And then, we have to do a traversal so that we are going to check whether the, con whether the current element is contained or not contained in the hash set. And then, take a call that whether it can be the starting number of the sequence and or not. So, that is what we are going to do. So, now let us see what is the code for this. Okay, So, we will start with the code changes. First of all, we will have this max variable initialized to 0. Then we will also have a hash set defined. Next, we will have a for loop to add all the elements to the hash set. Then, we will have another for loop in which, which we are going to do this check whether set1 
doesn't contain the number minus 1 the previous element if it doesn't contain then we are going to say this number is going to be the start the number which we have current the current number becomes the starting and then inside this we'll have another while loop to check where while this number set one dot contains this number start if it does if it is true then we will do start plus plus and then the moment this while condition breaks then outside of this we are going to calculate the max this will be math dot max of the current max and then the start would have already reached that number which is like the end of the sequence so we are going to subtract that start minus the current element which is start minus the current element is still held by that number the current element so what it means like in this case the num this num variable would be one then it becomes two three four so start gets incremented finally when start becomes five this condition breaks because set one doesn't contain five so now started at start is at five and num is the current number like the current element one so five minus one is four hence the length is one two three four so now we just have to return max we'll run this set one dot contains oh I put the bracket at the wrong place num minus one whether it contains the number minus one we will submit okay so yeah that was all about this question longest consecutive sequence which we have solved by making use of additional space so the time complexity they have achieved order of n because this is run for running for n number of times whatever the length of the array is and second time it is also running for the entire length of the array although we have a while condition in between inside of this but this is not going to add to the time complexity because this condition is not dependent on the length on the n like when we say n is al always like the input the total input how many elements are there in the array so this while condition is not going to be dependent on like not going to be linearly dependent on the number of elements in the array because this is going to be true for a certain subset, like a certain part of the array, not for all the elements. So that is why we are not going to count this. And of course, uh, putting and looking up elements uh, into the set is also going to be of order of 1. So overall, we have been able to achieve the time complexity of order of n. So that's all for today. Hope you guys have enjoyed the session for today.